Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. If any of you subscribe to CPU Magazine, you know that I am a monthly columnist and usually write about issues related to software and general internet. I've actually become a, a huge user advocate and uh, in doing so recently came out and suggested uh, that the industry adopt uh, an operating system that isn't Windows. And I, I mean that, you know, for the benefit of Windows, because right now there's really not, I know Wicket, but I'm getting there. You know Wicket, my dog, he's a big Linux freak. Uh, anyway, I'll get there, just give me a second. Uh, so I recommended that, uh, you know, this the, the industry, hardware industry and software industry kind of get together and, and really uh, plant a seed that will germinate within the Linux community. Now, whether that is something tied to Ubuntu or something completely different, uh, any way you look at it, more competition on the desktop is good for everybody, whether you work at the enterprise level or whether you work like me here at home or, you know, in front of a, just a regular old PC, a computer, a personal computer, uh, not having competition with software leads to stagnation and stagnation leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. <laughs> Sorry, broke into my Yoda there. <clears throat> anyway, I got an email here, and I know I've heard about this before, and I'm sure uh, people out in the community at live.perillo.com had recommended it at, at some point, but I, I thought today would be a good day to talk about it. Sam Morell, or AquaDev from chat, uh, pointed me over to reactos.org, and Sam writes, he says, Hey Chris, I'm sure like many other geeks in the world, you love open source software, I do, but often get annoyed by its incompatibility with any existing system and hardware. The other day I found something called React OS, which looks like a cross between Windows and Linux. Someone decided that they loved open source software, but were fed up with not being able to run their Windows software on it, reliably. I think you can see where this is going. From the description, I can see that it claims, React OS claims, to be able to run Windows binaries and drivers, but it's completely free. It even looks like Windows. And you can find the downloads and other info at reactos.org. On the React OS website, they say very clearly this is in alpha stages right now, so it's not ready for production. Like you could have it on a knockaround machine. They even have a, a VMware uh, application which you can install if you have VMware running. And you know I have VMware, I love VMware. Uh, let's me test all sorts of operating systems. Let's me run Windows on top of Mac OS X. Uh, they also note that this is not Linux. And it, from the website directly, it says the main goal of the React OS project is to provide an operating system which is binary compatible with Windows. This will allow your Windows apps and drivers to run as they would on your Windows system. Uh, it was written completely from scratch, uh, not using a Linux based uh, system, and shares none of the Unix architecture. Uh, I think uh, if they got the right developers uh, backing this, uh, I'm not going to say Microsoft would be in trouble. But certainly the hope for open source would grow. And I've had, you know, a long standing, uh, I guess, belief that open source is the future of software. It just seems to be inevitable. I mean, it's more than just a marketing tactic. I mean, you think about it. Just, just think about it. And, and in a way, the, the iPhone or App Store, this marketplace, is a microcosm of what's happening throughout the entire industry. You have a limited set of applications, right? You have like, I swear, 10 different flashlight applications. Some of them are $5 and some of them are free. And they pretty much do the same thing. I mean, they turn your screen white. Some of them have extra features, but is it worth $5 or free? Well, if it does the same thing, why would you spend $5 on something that works just as well, maybe even better, and is free? So you take it to the next level and you talk about open source and being able to look at that code, not only can you have something that is relatively cost free, at least for the price of software, not talking about this TCO or the total cost of ownership of software, but free as in, you know, just doesn't cost you anything up front for the software and then the ability to learn from that code. So people ask me, Chris, how do you get interested in technology and learning and, and sharing all this stuff? It's getting my hands dirty. Uh, you know, I can't code. Uh, a, a program anymore I used to be able to and I can work my way around a file or a script uh, with relative ease if I need to change one or two things I can do it doing it from scratch not really you know I've done HTML CSS did uh, or have been working on the wicked pixie 
theme for WordPress, at least self-hosted WordPress blogs. But I was only able to do that by looking at what other people have done and then looking at their code. And that's the benefit of open source. Microsoft doesn't have that. I mean, they, they built their whole business on a proprietary architecture. Is that business model going to work forever? No way. No way. Is Linux going to win? I don't think so, but that doesn't mean it's not shaking up the marketplace and really making you or should be making you stop and think about what it is you want to do with your computer and what your computer could already be doing for you without spending any, any more money necessarily. So Sam, thanks for passing this along. Certainly worth a discussion. Um, anybody else out there know something equally as unique? Uh, I mean, we've talked about Linux distributions and it is kind of geeky. I, I, I would rather kind of steer the conversation more towards the middle of the road. People who are kind of interested in technology but necessarily not compiling their own kernels, you know? Even I don't like doing that. Come on. Anyway, email address, chris at perillo.com, and you know you can stop by the chat room and join us for a usually healthy conversation. And even if I have the stream muted and I'm doing other things in the background, we have plenty of people here in the foreground because I'm doing this live video feed uh, pretty much all the time. Even when I'm not here, it's going. I kid you not. Go ahead, stop by today. It, it, I, I'm waiting for you right now. We're live, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That means right now at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.